All right, all, welcome back to another episode from our Let's Learn series. We uh, just did a character development in the last episode, and we're just sitting pretty much outside of Tan's house. Pretty much ready to um, bring him the uh, ruin effin and all that stuff. But um, before we actually do so, this is actually sort of like a good point to sort of like specify something. Um, at this point in the, in the quest I'm doing for Back in Dare Again, I don't actually have to, um, you know, talk to him just yet. I can actually make use of my uh, my orb in many ways right now to say get back through uh, the far portal in Reknor. And uh, we're actually going to do that for this episode, and I'm actually going to clear uh, maybe one of the dungeons in um, the Far East before basically continuing on. So let's go here to Reknor. We're just going to book it through, jump into... Um, uh, I forget what the dungeon is called, but it's basically an underwater dungeon. Fully underwater, there is no way to breathe under there unless you have uh, the ability to breathe underwater. And my character has this lovely sight range of 2 as you can see. Bolstered by the fact that I can see fire with heightened senses. I have two of these things over here. Interesting, I didn't realize it, but apparently this cloak of mine actually has a barrier on it. So activate a barrier from this uh, cloak. Odd. Effective though. Okay, what can I do possibly replace something for that just because I just noticed that and I want to make use of it. Guess we'll drop Nature's Pride just for now because I'm not really going to use it that much. So, let's move that there. Just gonna drop all all this stuff over back a little bit. And we're just going to move this right here, move that right there. Alright, so we're back here. There's that elf. That lovely elf. And we're back here in the Far East. So that's basically the stuff I know. You can go back here before you basically uh, talk to him the second time. And we're actually going to go here to the Underwater Cave. So that's the instance I'm going to go for. So the Underwater Cave. This is, as you can probably guess, underwater. Uh, you can't breathe in underwater unless you uh, are undead like a skeleton or if you have the ability to. So I'm going to basically constantly drown as while I'm under here. Unless I have something like, you know, this on, which we're going to put on right now. So, water breathing. So, unlike with the um, the other temple, the, not the temple, the uh, the Lake of Nur, I don't really have the ability, so to speak, of, like, being able to, um, uh oh. I basically don't have the ability, so to speak, of uh, being able to... Um, uh, you know, walk in here unless I have water breathing of some sort. And this guy's being a real nuisance. I'll note that you want to be very careful of skirmisher rares because they have so many um, debuff abilities. And pin you down, kill you at range quite easily. So yeah, most of these enemies are the same as that you encountered in Lincoln their uh, instance too. Probably won't have much, much issue killing any of the stuff in here. Now, for some reason, my uh, barrier isn't activating automatically here, so... Is this on I'll use or not? No, it is not. I'll use when uh, no enemies are visible. Move that stuff there, I guess. Yes, I've got such a huge hockey bar. So yeah, most of these enemies are just the same as the ones in Lake of Nur. I'll also note that um, there's also a, a unique type of uh, water enemy that I've yet to find. Not sure if I'll find it here because, you know, it's, it's random nature in this game. You don't want to always find them. 
But uh, that unique will probably spawn here if you haven't found it in Lake of Nur. They're all dead. Pretty much everything that dies in one hit whenever I get to them. I'll note that the stuff in here is naturally weak, but it's also because my character is uh, so damn offensively powerful, all the stuff just falls before me when I get up to it. Notably, not, no not items dropped here, that's also something that will happen against warm up monsters. Alright, so here's Flood Cave 2, and this is sort of one of these instances where everything is not hostile, sort of, to begin with, but you come to this guy here, he's the boss, and he basically gets you basically, you know, this little messy thing. You can basically kill him if you want, but you actually want to say, I shall leave now. Um, he basically gives you a nice little story, and you can basically say, blah, 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 B, and I will. And basically he opens up this little portal for you. Now, if you want to, by the way, you can kill this guy. You can talk to him and basically say, uh, I want your treasure warpies, attack him. But we'll do that maybe after. We'll go to uh, the Temple of Creation. So this is the Temple of Creation. And um, this is really the core element of what the uh, Underwater Dungeon is all about. This is where, where we're probably gonna, you're probably going to see like you know your first real dungeon of this Naga type of enemies. And um, it'll be a little bit difficult if uh, you are unaware of like, how dangerous these guys can be. So, I'll note by the way that since I've got this heightened senses, I don't, I don't really see anything around me, but um, it's very, you know, it's nice to be able to uh, essentially get away. Oh, this guy's a brawler. The heightened senses, the nice thing about it is that I'm able to basically see all around myself. So, light rays would probably be a little bit better. If just for the fact I can see the terrain around me. Really, you don't want to be walking around with, like, you know, no light radius like this all that much, unless, like, you're a rogue or someone who's going to um, use some invisibility or some sort of, like, stealthy nature type of thing. But it's good to go through, like, a dungeon with it or until I find something better because I think I actually. They sold off. Yeah, I sold off my other thing, so we'll basically go through here for a little bit with uh, this item. But I'll note that I, pre I prefer to have, like, you know, other stuff for uh, the purposes of, uh, of seeing around me, so to speak. I'll note that these Naga are rushing me, by the way. That's why they're disappearing out of nowhere sometimes. Also, to tell you a little bit about what the uh, Naga are like. The Naga are pretty much a mix of like spellcaster and strong melee type of enemies. They're kind of like a hybrid between you know all you know all the styles like arcane and range, arcane and um, arcane ruins and like melee. When fighting these guys, you want to be very careful of them because they do have a fairly decent damage output for an enemy. They're dying easily enough here, but um, they are pretty damn strong. Main thing we want to worry about them though is the fact that they have ruins, and those ruins can you know make them a lot more difficult depending on what ruins they sort of have available to themselves. Note by the way, there's lots of traps in this area as you can see. It's not a big deal, but they're there. All right, there's the first level done. So this is always a stack level to the first level. It will never change when you come here. And you'll notice that there's all these tridents. And the Nagos will generally drop only tridents when you basically kill the Meridians. So if you're looking for, you know, a, a trident wielding character, this would be where you basically find tridents. Um, specifically for your, for your trident wielding characters. I don't use tridents though, so none of that really matters to me.
here on the Temple of Creation 2, it's like sort of like an augmented um, instance where I'll be fighting the all the standard squid enemies and stuff like that, but I've also got these nags to sort of uh, kill as well. Also note is that these guys, if you look at their um, faction, these guys here are currently enemies, but that's actually going to change as I sort of progress further into uh, the Temple of Creation. And you'll see what I mean by change when I actually get to the fair level. The fair level is also in their static level. Like Temple of Creation 2 is just, you know, this uh, normal like of RAM generation dungeon type of thing. Oh, so this guy actually disarmed me there. Another guy used the Infusion Sun. That guy apparently used Control Teleport. I know that that guy there used Control Teleport, by the way, because I'm looking here and basically show you it off. But generally, the thing about these Nagas, um, this is like an example where there can be kind of a, you know, kind of a nuisance. This guy actually used Rune Control Phase Door to literally pop right next to me. And um, that's actually one use of it. You can basically get on top of enemies with it immediately. And this is probably your first instance where you'll probably see it used constantly sometimes, where you guys pick it up. And that guy apparently is the ruined heat beam on me. And that guy rushed me. Alright, um, I'll note that I basically have a very special instance here. Note that it basically says a barrier burst for my leather jacket and a damage shield popped up on my character. That's a result of my uh, untouchable jacket here, and it's like it's, it's a very special effect. So there's like our, I guess, the first instance, I guess, where it's popped up and, you know, be, been to be use. You're dead. All right, we got ourselves a Nickermancer by the looks of it over here. So I want to activate maybe this. We're going to speed up, activate this, heroism. This is kind of a bad sort of situation to do, by the way, charging up a, a guy in like the middle of the room here. But um, at this point with my character, I'm not really too concerned about charging into the black. Now, note that he put impending doom on me. Um, it's not really a big issue because I'm about to kill him, but... There's things to be concerned about basically in here. Oh, that guy used, um, what do you use on me to freeze me there? Was that Budding Gale Ruin? No, one of these other guys used freeze on me. Ow, ow. Now it's kind of annoying. Now, Stuff I note, by the way, um, I haven't really touched on it, but some infusions that like these guys are using, um, and if I use them as well, they actually brighten up the area. So this area is brightened up because she actually lit it up with her uh, sun infusion there. Usually, it's not really a big issue or you know something really to note about sun infusions, but it's something that they do have as a, as a property: the ability to light up areas, unlike tiles. And over and under and up and this way and that. There's an enemy over there. Interesting how heightened senses work, isn't it? Or infravision or anything else for that matter. All right. So lots and lots and lots of tridents that I don't really care about. This helmet, don't really care about it either. Note that the, um, uh, I'm not sure you've really noticed this yet, but uh, all these things, they have like this like orate and um, they have like, uh, um, what is it, deep sea. All these like different like little things before like the actual trident. These like um, are kind of important, so to speak, and I guess I should probably go over them now, but um, I'll note that each of these, uh, like every item that you basically find has like this sort of tier to it. So tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, tier 4, tier 5. And the um, tridents, they basically use different tiers like for like describing their like things. So an aura trident is like a tier 4 and a deep sea trident is like a tier 3 uh, trident. These are a little bit different from like other equipment that you might see in the game. So 
generally with like um, armor and like other uh, conventional weapons, these guys instead of having like uh, um, you know the things, so to speak. Okay, we're actually going to shot step you. And excellent, I leveled up. I'm actually going to try and find some uh, armor first, just so I can show you it off. But basically, they have like different names. Uh, it'll be stuff like Vorotune and um, Stratolite, so to speak, to describe the actual um, like tier for what you're basically equipping and such. Uh, we're going to basically keep going up even light. I basically took that point out for those who weren't paying attention. I actually, in the uh, uh, character development episode, took a point out of Baven Light to put it in fixed skin. So. I sure show show a little bit about like you know this very quickly remapping your talents if uh, you uh, only recently changed them. I know by the way I couldn't take talents like out of here, but for stuff like this I could take a talent here, a talent out of there. Most of the stuff that you can take talents of is usually like in blue here, so I can take this out of here. I can take that out of there. Those are the type of talents I can really remove. Same with like rush here or this one down here can deal time. And we picked up time shield. Time shield is kind of interesting, but uh, what to say about time shield? Maybe I'll use it sometime. Probably will. I've got way too much stuff in my hotbar down here, to be honest. Note that when I'm disarmed, I do so much less damage, like attacking these guys. And let's brush. That was not optimal there, basically, is attacking while I was disarmed. But at this point, I really don't care. These guys aren't strong enough just yet to really do much of an issue. Now, I should probably note before I forget, but if you look at these guys, these guys are like faction enemy. There's actually one guy in here, and he's actually of the faction Temple of Creation. And I'll note that, you know, again, Infusion Sun right up the area. I can see in here. I actually want to sort of move quickly at this point. Because uh, there's actually a bug sort of associated with this level. Where if you kind of don't move fast enough, something uh, um, that will happen, I don't really want to happen. But we just want to basically push up to the boss, so to speak, in this instance really quick. Okay, let's get over here. Okay, note that I'm basically confused and I'm missing constantly, so... Is there a thing to know about confu uh, um, confusion and... Or not confuse blindness, basically, is that complete characters that kind of hurts your ability to see stuff. Alright, so in this room, here is the boss, and he's kind of special because his faction is actually a temple of creation. So, unlike these guys here, he's actually not going to attack you immediately. So, I can make a use of that basically to sort of kill all these guys. And the thing about it, I'll note here, is that I really wanted to come in here very quickly because sometimes. Uh, what will happen, these guys will, for some reason, just attack him, or they'll basically attack all around here, and one of the attacks will hit him, and then he'll go hostile to them. So, we basically don't want him uh, going hostile and getting killed if like, you actually want to talk to him for a uh, specific reason. So we're actually just going to sit in here and basically kill these guys. Yeah, let's basically sort of demonstrate it by... Basically, it hits Lazul there for a little bit of damage. And now, Sazil's now kind of ticked off, and he's actually going to attack them. So, that's something you have to really be careful of, because if he starts to attack guys, then... Uh, well, you can't really talk to him, and he, might, and he won't survive, and there's actually a reason for him, you know, you want him to live. I actually do that just to show that right now. So, in the Prodigies, I'll actually note that with him, there's a special project called the Legacy of the Lauren. And... Essentially what this is, this prodigy, if you side with Sazul, and this is like the quest that this sort of refers to, this prodigy, he basically gives you this prodigy, which basically uh, lets you get um, high mastery of exotic we weapon mastery, and also gives you access to the spit poison talent. 
So it's a very effective way of sort of like, you know, uh, powering up your character. It also gives you a fair reward if he's still alive, so there's that. Anyhow, so basically, uh, he basically, you know, is much like the other guy. He, um, if you basically uh, talk to him, he's like, you know, blah, blah. And then he basically sends you back to try and kill him. So you basically can get a choice to sort of kill um, either Azul or the other guy. Or if you want, you can kill them both. And I'll probably just do it right now. So as you wish, blah, blah, blah. We're just going to kill him. And sadly, I'm still in the frost here, but we're just going to get out of that. So yeah, he's not really tough for me. So kill Zazul, destroy creation. So once you kill him, you get a special item called the Eldritch Pearl. And that's actually the reason I sort of came in here, because I wanted to get that item before I actually went to Tannen, for example. Um, this is a very special uh, light source. It basically, um, I'll actually put on this right now, because it's actually worth putting on over the other one. This gives you a light radius of six, and also bo boosts up like all your stats, your physical power, unless you breathe in water and gives you spell power. Essentially, this is a very powerful um, utility type of like uh, light that's going to be useful to any character, and um, you know it's going to be useful to my character specifically. Uh, do I want to keep this? I'll note that this is a very powerful thing, so I'm, I'm actually considering getting rid of this just because I don't really feel I need to keep it. I don't feel like using the uh, Eldritch Pearl's special ability though. It actually has a special like flood ability. Actually, I should probably just use it. So, rest up. All right, still recharging. Let's just go explore the level and then I'll use it in a moment. All right, this guy just did a warshout type of ability there on me. That's kind of annoying. And with that. Nice having a light radius. I can see stuff now. All right, let's see if I can uh, use this now if I wait enough time. All right, so basically, just like well, Elder Pearl, this like this sort of flood ability. You probably see it on the Orc Cry Cryomancer's whole, whole lot, but it's not really something I really care about. What that does is it basically, um, if I'm trying to like freeze people, that can be kind of useful to sort of like you know reduce their stun freeze value so I can actually stun them. But it's not you know anything too special. I don't think by itself is a thing. Okay, there's Time Shield. I actually think I should probably show off that as well. Time Shield is a very powerful defensive ability. Actually, let's just put it right there. You now, let's just activate it here. So, basically, what Time Shield does, it does like the sort of damage shield thing that I've been doing all along. But it's a little bit different from the other stuff because it essentially distorts it and sends it forward in time. So essentially what's going to happen is once this basically goes off. You get this sort of temporal restoration field. And I'm basically going to be healing as a result of it, so to speak, for you know all the damage I took. It's kind of like a built-in like damage me and I'll heal after type of thing. Kind of interesting. I'm not sure we'll actually make use of it. I, I might make use of it because it's, it's actually got a fairly good value. And if I actually train up time shield, it'll actually get even better. But um, it's one of those things I'm not sure we'll, we'll need on my character, but it could be nice to sort of have. At this point, I don't really care about defenses so much because I'm just, you know, I'm pretty much untouchable anyways. Stuff is like dying one hit like that. All right. Just thinking. You know what? We're actually are gonna just like have the Eldritch Pearl, so to speak, available. My character does, you know, sort of revolve around stuns of these two things. So having this available to sort of, you know, reduce the stun chance of stuff is actually going to be kind of beneficial, so to speak. Um, by the way, so I can look in here. Here's like a Dwarven Steel Mace, so that's like a tier 3 type of thing. The Stradley is like tier 4. This Mace War is short Elven Wood. Elven Wood is like tier 4 for staves. So all these like different type of items, they have like different types of names. So Stradlite, um, Hard Lark Cap is tier 3. Stradlite Mail is like, you know, tier 4 for armor type. It's tier 4 for shields. 
Okay, so we're back here. And I'm actually a bit frustrated because there actually is not only this guy, but there's a couple of rares also next to him. So we're just going to attack him. Trajectory, he says. Okay, I stunned him. Activate the time shield. Heal up a little bit because why not? Uh, let's put on the bleed effect on him. Him with that. And by the way, you get an achievement for killing him if you're doing his own quest. I sort of completed his own quest, but whatever. Kill that guy. Note that these guys, by the way, they're, they're the faction Warlair, so they're all they're they're basically a different faction than like the uh, other guys. Now, note that he has a very special item, this dragon here. You drop something called the Triumph of the Trides. This is a nice little trident to sort of use if, um, uh, basically, if you like, you uh, get the Norn, I guess, thing, and you know, I guess if uh, the other guy dies, you can at least pick up this, and it'll be a nice little um, exotic weapon to sort of make use of. All right, there's an example of a Vortune weapon. So there's Vortune, tier five for uh, equipment type stuff. Elven Silk does tier five for robe. Hmm. Don't really care about any of his other stuff, I don't think. Okay, we're just gonna kill out the rest of these guys. There's Rogue's Plight. That's an anti-rogue uh, type of equipment. And that's basically it for everyone in here. Unless there's anyone over here that I'm missing. Alright, so that's basically it for the Flight Cave. And primarily the reason I came in here was just to get the Eldritch Pearl from the uh, Naga Boss. Now that I basically have this Eldritch Pearl, I'm pretty much good and I'll just basically be on my way, so to speak. So yeah, there's Rogue's Plight. It basically transfers a bleed, poison, or wound. Um, of its source to a nearby enemy every four turns. Kind of interesting. And the other stuff I... I'm not, actually not really looking for stats anyway, so it doesn't really matter anymore what the other stuff does. So, that was the uh, Flood Cave there. Um, I think there's only one other instance, so to speak, that... Uh, is like you know not one it's like an it's an optional one that uh, i don't have to go into and i'm pretty sure now, where it was it the um the crypt i cannot remember there it is okay so there's the uh shadow crypt that's the only other or you know it's it, is, it's, it says dark crypt but it's actually the shadow crypt was what it's called um this dungeon here it's optional. I could do it now. This is sort of like, you know, tying to this like episode, but we are actually going to avoid it. And you know what? We're actually going to, uh... So not by the way that these guys will kill the orc patrols. I'm actually just going to push back to uh, Magiel at this point. I'm actually just going to um, showcase something that I really should have, uh, show with those patrols. You seen like the orc, orc patrol? Basically, they're a random group of enemies that like chase you on the world map and all that. But I, have, I haven't really shown you off the um, the alternative guys, the uh, the zigger patrols or the adventure patrols. And now is probably a good time to sort of like do so. Just because you know, I, I I might go for the entire game without ever battling one of these guys, and it's probably good to at least show it once. So, I want to note, by the way, I've gone through this game with, you know, avoiding them. Those Ziggur Patrols and Adventure Patrols, they're very easy to avoid, but, um... The, uh, Orc Patrols are not. Okay, here's a Ziggur Patrol. So, we're just going to attack these guys. So, much like with the other guy, it's an ambush, and it's like the ambush type of instance. Um, these guys, however, are a little bit different from the Orcs. Because they're actually player type of characters, so um, you'll note that basically if you look at me, I'm like an elite elf. This guy is an elite dwarf. These guys are essentially um, class type of enemies, so if you look at him, he's basically going to have like class, a class of some sort. In this case, this guy's a summoner, and um, he'll be a threat because of it. And we apparently we've got another guy right here, another summoner. So we've got two summoners to sort of deal with.
Not sure there's anyone else on the map. So that's basically what the Ziggler Patrols are. You, you essentially fight random player character type class is that are of like the various races that you know you could make. They're basically um um they're pretty much just like your own character. They're basically a class with like their own stat points and equipment and um you fight them and then they you know it's a battle to the death so to speak. Alright there's another one. Let's go fight him. I'll note by the way that these guys would be um non hostile if uh I was like you know not um, an arcane user, but they are hostile because I am an arcane user. Okay, so we basically got over here a dwarf with like shield wall. That means that this guy is probably a bulwark by the looks of it. Note that all these guys, these Zigger patrols, by the way, they'll have stuff like anti magic here. So these guys will have like anti magic shield and they'll have like anti magic properties of some sort. And there's a third guy. Usually, this is what you can expect, by the way. You can expect up to two or three. Of these like type of enemies sort of popping out. Let's use province to sort of get rid of that and get rid of that confuse. Note that he did mana clash there, that like sort of mana killing taunt. Now I'm not sure, but I think this is shut off for some reason. You know, I think that this is actually shutting off because I'm using other shield type of taunts, so because I have like you know this like shielding ruin here, for example, and these other stuff. The barrier isn't as exactly as effective. Uh, I'll note that that is something you can do by the way though. You can like, you know, put on um you can put your barrier on, so to speak, on a character and make use of it if you don't have any shielding rooms, but since I do, it's not as nice apparently on my character. Something I've done on like past characters, I just level up barrier to five of five and then I just use that automatically over time basically. Worked it worked quite well. But I seem to be turning off um constantly here. No, I still have this uh, helmet on. I should probably put that back on. And compare this. This changes my damage, gives me cunning will. Note here's like an item that basically reduces my confusion and fear immunity. Kind of oddly. It does give me some like you know special talent there, but nothing, nothing really save me using it. Uh, something I note then, notice that all this equipment is getting dropped. Something I note about these adventure patrols and zigger patrols that I'm sort of fighting here, these guys do drop, you know, some decent equipment. So if you're looking for equipment for your character, these guys can be a very good early source to go after. I note, want to note by the way, you want to be very careful like attacking these guys, because sometimes you'll find, like say this guy's a Mind Slayer, and we know how much you know, trouble we've been having with Mind Slayers, such as the unique from before. These guys, you know, there's a good chance that you may find in here some guys that'll be a little bit more uh, troublesome, so to speak. Okay, what's giving me mana restore? Is it this? Nice, so I'm actually getting mana restore, so that's actually going up constantly. But anyhow, they're basically all dropping these equipment for these, like, you know, Ziggurat Trolls. Now, sadly, I don't think I'm, I'm seeing any adventure patrols. Adventure patrols are like, uh, oh, here we go. So here's an adventure party. Adventure parties are, are essentially a little bit different from Ziggers because uh, unlike the Zigger, these guys can be any type of like class. So Ziggers are re regulated as being anti-magic, but the Zigger here, or not the Zigger, but the adventurous patrol here, these guys can be any class. And in this case, we've got like, like, uh, an archer here, a Shaloran archer. Um, over here, there's a... Uh, Looks like an ooze master, so I'll note by the way that you can get the anti magic guys in here too. So you're basically adventure priors are basically supercharged like um you know frets, so to speak. So now I'm gonna fight this guy. And he's gone. There's another guy out here, and apparently he used mana clash, so this guy's an anti magic, so we got ourselves Backstab is on this guy. He's got armor training, relax shot. I think this guy's a berserker. So we're just going to kill him. So there's an adventure party, much like the uh, Ziggur party, they're more or less, you know, much of the same. Uh, they drop their own equipment that, you know, might be of use to you, possibly, potentially. But that's essentially what they're all about. I'll note, by the way, these Ziggur trolls and adventure trolls, they spawn randomly on the map. You know what? We're just gonna kill this guy. I don't feel like you know playing chicken little with these guys. We're just gonna kill him. So here's a wormick. All 
They're dead. That's something odd, by the way, but sometimes you'll find like these guys are carrying like arcane items. So here's like an arcane item that these guys were carrying. Note you can farm these guys for experience and like levels and all that, but eventually what's going to happen is that you're going to come across like, you know, that type of class that's going to be really detrimentally, you know, effective. Or you could also find out that these guys are sort of, you know, set up in such a way that you're going to have a really hard time sort of fighting them. Like, for example, I'm starting here with a guy already inside of me. It's very possible you could get a spawn where all three or two of these guys are on top of you already at the start. And then that'll make it a little bit, you know, difficult. And note that this halfling's dodging my strikes. This is something I know about halflings. They're, they're very dodgy type of people because they've got, like, duck and dodge. So his evasion is, like, going up like crazy. So we got ourselves another halfling, so he'll probably be kind of dodgy. Or not. Alright, I think you guys have pretty much seen the sort of gist of what the Ziggur Patrol and the other guys are all about. And I could probably keep hunting these guys constantly if I want to, but there's really no need to. Kill this guy and just be on our way. There's an archer, a dead archer. Oh! Okay, so I took a little bit of damage there from uh, this guy. Um, I kind of hurt a little bit actually. So, this is where, you know, this guy got a really good shot on me and did a little bit of damage. And, you know, you could have, like, a bad instance where these guys really got some good damage and killed your character if you weren't careful. So, that's actually a good blessing disguise. It actually shows off how da dangerous these guys can actually be sometimes, potentially. Alright. There's another one down here, apparently. We're going to try this book around him. That's going to be pretty much it for this episode, by the way. So, I just wanted to show off a little bit about those patrols before uh, finishing the episode. Next time, uh, there's going to be a nice big warning at the description block for the video. We're going to basically go into uh, talk to Tan here, and I'll basically show off the uh, the rest of the quest, so sort for back in there again, and what it all has to entail. For now, take care, and I'll see you guys next time around.